The following is for information purposes only and should not be considered investment advice. All opinions and views expressed by the contributors to this podcast are in a personal capacity only. They do not represent the views of Progressive Equity Research or any other organization mentioned in this podcast. So it is Friday, the 23rd of August. Jeremy, welcome back. Good to have you here again. Hi, Gareth. Yeah. Good to chat and interested to hear what you think's been going on this week. Obviously, got Jackson Hole that we'll talk about a bit, but interested to understand more broadly what you think the markets are thinking and, and where we might be heading. Okay. Well, as you say, I think attention will be very much focused, certainly today and probably into next week and beyond in terms of the implications of what's going on at the central bankers marshmallow roasting fest at Jackson Hole. And today we get a speech from Jay Powell, uh, which goes out three o'clock our time, I believe. And I think it really centers on investor opinion, wavering around whether the US economy is experiencing a soft landing or is going to carry on and reach a hard landing. And specifically, the concern is whether the Federal Reserve has left it too late to release its foot from the monetary brakes by reducing interest rates and reversing quantitative tightening and doing all that stuff, or whether it is executing the perfect, immaculate, soft landing that has been written about, derided, but has now, I would argue, become the consensual view of financial markets. So that's kind of priced in, you think, for a soft landing? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, bond markets are now discounting a pretty sharp trajectory of rate cuts into the remainder of this year and beyond. And stock markets, well, we've had the wobble of a few weeks ago on the back of the Japanese carry trade worries, but that has been a remarkably quick recovery in confidence and sentiment. And while we haven't reached new highs, so I think sort of the bears would point out we're at lower highs, confidence in financial markets have been restored. However, recent labor market revisions, I think released yesterday or the day before by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, amplify the concern here showing that these employment trends have been quite a bit weaker than previously reported by the official payroll data. So they've been revising previous figures downwards, which suggests the market hasn't been quite as strong as we thought. Uh, Yes. While market confidence has been resumed, we've had a wobble. We haven't reached previous highs. And the bond market is certainly in a, I would say, still a more bearish view of the world than the stock market. But generally, there just seems to be a consensual view that the soft landing is where we're heading. What I would concur with is that we are now at the beginning of a Federal Reserve rate cutting cycle. And while that might be getting investors in a more positive frame of mind, I think a brief glance at stock market history might suggest an alternative outcome. So just looking at the last three occasions, the Fed initiated a rate cutting cycle. Well, they were in November 2000, June 2007, and October 2019. And within six to nine months of each of those dates, the market had quite major corrections. So the the history hasn't been good for this phase in the the rate increase and then cutting cycle. But the equity markets are at least this time hoping it's going to be different. But the bond markets are being a bit more cautious. I would say so, yeah. And Mm. behind all this, we've got a continuing weaker dollar, which we've spoken about before. But the dollar is now approaching the psychologically and I would say technically significant support level of 100 on its trade-weighted DXY average. And in that context... Bring it back to the UK. Sterling has strengthened again this week. We're back sort of at 131. So I think we had some interesting levels of currency moves. And 
we can come on and maybe mention again what's happening in Japan, but the yen is starting to strengthen a little bit. So we're not out of the woods, I think, in the market volatility that we can get from divergent central bank policies and agendas. And highly relevant, I guess, at a moment when central bankers are coming together for this symposium in Jackson Hole currently. Okay, well, we'll see what they've got to say. And yeah, by this time next week, there'll probably be a lot to talk about in terms of the smoke signals that we've received from Jay Powell or the others at Jackson Hole and, and see what they've had to say for themselves. Yeah. What else is going on more broadly than across the rest of the macro landscape? I guess bring it back to the UK. We've had just a reminder of where inflationary pressures might be. We've had Ofgem announce today that the energy price cap for the fourth quarter of 24 it's going to be 10%. So that means an average of £1,717 for a typical household. And overnight, we had inflation data for Japan, which showed that for the second consecutive month, inflation is running at 2.8%. Doesn't sound too bad in the context of everywhere else. But when you've only got 250 basis points of interest rates, that is very significant. And the Bank of Japan president signaled to Parliament yesterday that further rate hikes were definitely not off the table. Bringing it back to the UK, we also had some public sector borrowing figures this week, which weren't very kind reading for the incoming Labour government. Public sector borrowing was 3.1 billion in July, 1.8 billion more than in the same month in 2023. And this is you know, above expectations and the highest level we've seen for July since 2021. So, yeah, yeah it's um, a bit concerning, really, isn't it? That's yeah. Quite a gap. Indeed. And I think the, certainly the market expectation is, and I think maybe for good reason, that although they see UK rates coming down, they're going to come down less quickly now than the US, which is quite a big change. And one of the reasons I think why we've seen this pop up in the value of sterling relative to the dollar. Okay. Thanks for that. And yeah, we'll, we'll catch up on the big points there next week. So what about the UK this week? What have you been looking at? Yeah, UK small cap landscape has continued to excite and surprise. There's been quite a lot of news actually from the progressive client roster. We had a good contract extension for Beaks, oh, uh, yeah. cloud computing platforms. They had an extension from the JSE, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, which was well received. We also had some more cautious news, though. Zoo Digital reported their FY24 results, and they're still struggling under the weight of the film and TV industry, which, well, first of all, they had COVID. Then they had the writers and actors strike, and now a number of their major customers are going through quite significant reorganizations. So there's a lot of pressure there, and Zoo Digital is still working their way through that. So that's been a, a difficult patch for them. Also difficult for Watkin Jones. In their case, it's really the, as you were just describing, the, the slower pace or the slower expected pace of UK rate cuts. And those interest rate cuts, or the lack of them, have been holding back deal closures for Watkin Jones. So they've seen some challenges in getting their deals across the line. It's quite an interest rate sensitive business. We did have some better news, though, from STV. They've announced a number of additional commissions, including one from Apple TV+. Plus. So it's great to see them continuing the, the steady flow of, of announcements they've been making recently. And also an oil and gas stock, Petra Matad, Mongolia-focused business in the oil space. They've seen quite a significant move forward in their steps towards production. So they've had some good news there and they're, they're moving rapidly towards getting the oil flowing. So some good news from them. Yeah, on the theme of, I guess, following on from what you were saying about STV and their studios business, I noticed the release from a small listed company called Facilities by ADF this morning, which has raised... £10 million of new equity and has taken the opportunity to do a placing for some of his existing founder shareholders to realise a further £10 million of equity. And this was all wrapped up in a transaction to finance the acquisition of a business called Autotrack Portable Roadways for a consideration of just over £21 million. So a neat little deal that the company says is earnings accretive, and you can see why facilities ADF provide trailers and other facilities for TV and film production companies in the UK. The overall value of this company is only about 40 million quid. So in one liquidity event today, they've traded approximately 50%, 5-0, 
of that company's market capitalization. So I think it, it's a nice little marker that UK micro cap companies with a good story can realize value for their founders and raise growth equity all in one go. No, it's great to hear. I mean, it, it does sound like an interesting deal, but also good to hear that you know, UK markets are open for the right deal. There is money there and both companies can raise new capital and founders. Although I think, did you mention that these founders have actually left the business already? So they're not, they're not currently involved. Oh uh, yeah. I think there was a handover at or slightly before the IPO. So it's a company I think sort of arrived on the stock market with a bit of a built-in overhang, if you like. Right. Okay. It wouldn't be right not to mention the tragic fate of Mike Lynch and our yeah. chat today, given the uh, tragic events of um, him and his family and colleagues on that boat down in Sicily. Yeah, very sad. I mean, I, I didn't know Mike well. I'd looked at autonomy and spoken occasionally to him in, in the context of that business. And he, he was certainly very, very talented, hugely driven guy. And, and what he achieved was was very significant. So yeah, he will be missed very much across the UK tech scene. The tragedy would be that he, you know, he's still a relatively young man and he would have had a decade or two at least of what one would imagine to be an enhanced determination to spread the word and invest behind budding UK technology companies and to add so much to the UK tech scene. And uh, yeah, I think that's a, a tragic loss for all of us. Absolutely agreed. Okay, and then turning to next week. Well, I was going to say it's a quiet week next week, which it does look like it was, but I'd caveat that because I think the last time I said that two or three weeks ago, we had the most almighty ructions in financial markets with this sort of unwinding of the carry trade. But it is a quiet week. We have yet to find out what comes out of Jackson Hole, of course. But uh, Indeed, yeah. yes. So Thursday, we get the US second quarter GDP data, the second estimate of which should show that we get actually quite a robust 2.8% GDP growth coming out of the US. So that looks uh, pretty nailed on. And then Friday, we get European inflation data for August, which should see uh, an improved number of 2.3% from 2.6%. And then on the same day, we get the core PCE inflation data, supposedly the Fed's favoured measure of inflation, which is going to show pretty well unchanged 2.6% year-on-year -year figure for the month of July. Good. And let's hope Jay Powell doesn't change things in the meantime, and that can indeed be a quiet week. So we'll, we'll catch up this time next Friday. Talk to you then. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Brought to you by Progressive Equity.